I'm, I'm Vic Francis and I'm the pastor here at Shaw Vineyard. It's our first Sunday for the year, um, which is always a really exciting time. We do really value the break. We recognize the, I don't know, the, the, the busy lives that people lead. And so to have that summer break, almost like a Sabbath, is so good for um, our volunteers, our hardworking worship team, all of these sorts of things. And so it's, um, it's been a lovely break. But, but you need to gather, don't you? And so through the wonders of modern technology, we're able to gather with you today um, and to be able to be church with you. Um, this year, we've always, until now, if this is the first time you've joined us, until now, over the last year or so, we've broadcast our worship. Um, and that's been good, but it, it is actually quite a demanding process, both technically and volunteer-wise. And um, so for the start of this year, just to sort of um, ease uh, the pressure and burden on people who are here, we're not going to be showing the worship itself, but just kicking in at about 10.30 the hosting, the announcements of what's happening in church, a little soliloquy, we call it here, um, of uh, us to, to people who are joining us for the day from outside, and then the message, um, which we can do a, a lot easier in terms of getting it right on Facebook Live. So that's the plan. Um, it will be a little bit of a, um, a juggle, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to join us in that this week, most weeks. But if you want worship, I guess you've got two options. One is come. We would love to, we would love to see you. We'd love to see you um, in person. Um, and the other is there's just great worship resources out there, aren't there? You can, uh, you can Google um, any of the songs that we've sung today and just get great versions of them. So wherever you are, if, you, if you're on holiday today and so you'd be normally here, bless you. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next week or the week after or whatever. Um, if you're just checking in because you see us from time to time or, you know, sort of somehow the algorithms grabbed you, um, we're so stoked um, that you're with us. Please consider yourself part of our whānau for today and um, just trust that today's message is as relevant for you as maybe it is for anybody who's here with us today. So bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm just going to um, sort of uh, keep an eye on our, on our people who seem to be pretty happily connecting with one another. And um, from there... I'll begin the opportunity of my first message for the year. So, bless you. People are making faces at me, so I'm getting distracted. So, all the best. Let me pray anyway. So, God, I just want to thank you for each and every one who's with us today, who's not here in the building, but is, is with us by distance. Well, would you be with each one in their year, in their new year, in their new wine? And... Um, Whatever their need is, whatever their hope is, whatever their dream is, we just commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church. Hey, it's lovely to see you. If I haven't met you before, my name's Vic, and uh, it's my great pleasure to pastor here at Shaw Vineyard. It's my great pleasure to introduce our year in terms of our speaking, our preaching. Um, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to be back together again. It's been quite a long break, um, but a good break, I think, And um, but just... You know, my heart was warmed as each of you came in today and I was able to say hi and catch up. And so hopefully you too are connecting. And obviously, you know, people on holiday, probably some people here will still get away on holiday in the meantime. But uh, as we gather for the year um, of finding common purpose. Um, so what we thought we'd do at the start of the year is we're going to have the next four, su four Sundays, including today, we're going to get four different people to give four different New Year's-ish type meeting, type messages. Um, and so it won't be sort of like, you know, here's how to plan and set goals or whatever, but just some thoughts that are relevant to uh, the introduction and uh, um, d delivery into a new year. So we hope that that will be sort of stimulating and stirring, and maybe each week there'll be something that might be relevant for us as we, as we um, head off on a new year. And as Paulina was saying, we have those lunches that are going alongside them to get feedback to and fro. So, you know, kind of ministries, if you're, if you're thinking Holy Spirit ministry, you know, communities, if you're thinking forming community in the community, um, uh, uh, families, uh, you know, sort of obvious, you know, kind of if you've got kids. And then, of course, our volunteers. So it's just, it's just a great opportunity, I think, to be close, to draw close. To, to, to get involved and um, to be part of whatever God is developing. So we want to really encourage you in that. And so I get to kick off, you know, the first of these series. And I, and I, I, 
just thinking about this whole thing of new wine, and so I want to take you to Mark chapter 2 today. Um, so you may like to um, grab your apps or grab your Bibles and have a bit of a look. I'll be, I'll be, um, the, the reading I'll be doing will be on your screen, but it may be something you'd like to follow along. And um, I think for a lot of people it'll be a familiar passage, but, but I think in the context of a new year, it's probably a passage which might be quite helpful for us. And so we, um, we come into it in uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and said to him, Why did John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of untrunk cloth on an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it. The new from the old and a, a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. And so I called this message New Year, New Wine, with a, with a little sort of mysterious question mark at the other end. You, you, probably get what the, you probably get the question mark. It's like the New Year's inexorable, isn't it? It's like you couldn't start December the 31st turning over to January the 1st as much as you might have wanted to or as much as, you, much as you did want to or whatever. The New Year is certain. But what's not certain is that starting a new year is going to turn over new wine into our lives or indeed a development and growth of our relationship with God. That's, that's not necessarily certain. But it is true that, that this time of year, this season, if you like, is one opportunity. It's not the only opportunity. It's not like, man, if you don't grab at the start of the year, God's not going to be able to touch you or, or speak to you for the rest of the year. But it is one opportunity, nevertheless, where maybe we're a, we're a little more relaxed or we're a little more open or we're a little more sort of thinking about what might be happening during the year to hit a bit of a reset and, and maybe sort of to be thinking, I need a bit of new wine in my life and in my faith and in the journey of my relationship with God. And that's what I'd love us to think about and explore a little this morning. So what's Jesus saying here in this, uh, in this passage? It's a big picture. We call it maybe an eschatological passage. It's, a, it's an announcement, and it's, a, it's fundamentally things are changing as Jesus is speaking this whole picture. He's saying that the, the kingdom which he is bringing, and he is the king, the kingdom that he is bringing isn't going to fit. It's not going to fit. It's obviously not fitting already into the the tight, the stiff, the super-regulated world of first-century religion that he was coming into. So Tom Wright, the the commentator, says of this, that the new life, the fellowship, and the joy which he was introducing could hardly be contained in unexpanding, unyielding, unchanging traditions of the Pharisees. God's new wine was going to increase, or something was going to change, or something that was going to increase, in intensity and power. And so that's the big picture of the story. Jesus is appearing and things are changing. Today, I want to use the same text as a, as a prompt, as a, maybe it's, it's almost like a lower case, you know, it's not like this is not what he was saying, you know, that in 2024, this is what the message that we would be, be, be giving. But a, but a helpful prompt, I think, as we contemplate a new year, as we think about a new year, um, of the things that God might be inviting us to and the new wine that he might be inviting us towards. And so I want to talk about a new wine of, I'm going to say a new wine of celebration, a new wine of looking forward, and a new wine of, of getting wet, a new wine of celebration, looking forward and getting wet, and starting with this whole idea of a new wine of celebration. You know, our Mark passage starts with this example of a wedding. Jesus takes us into a wedding. It's not actually a wedding. He's just giving a, 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 it as an illustration. And weddings, of course, we would understand, I think, instinctively, you know, uh, in our society, weddings are a time of celebration. We, 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 would, we would just know that that's what it's about. My daughter's getting married in March, and, and you know, in and amongst all of the, I don't know, the, the 
the, the sifting and the, the, the planning and things like that that taken, there's an underlying thing of uh, this is a celebration of lives and hope and expectation and, and beauty and love and, and, and future together and all of the good things that we would hope would be part of a, of a wedding celebration, of people declaring their love for each other. In the story, though, you've got the Pharisees and you've got John's disciples, which is slightly surprising to me because John's disciples you'd think would be kind of closer to the thing that Jesus was doing. But the Pharisees and John's disciples, they're, they're fasting. And some of them, Pharisees, it seems, they're, they're really grumpy because Jesus and his followers are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not keeping this law. They're not fasting on the right days and they're not doing it in the right way. And, and, and somehow that makes them really uneasy. Not that there's anything wrong with fasting and not that there's anything wrong um, with, you know, kind of being part of those processes. But the, at this time, this is a, this is a different ball game. Jesus is going to say. And he calls them out on this, this, this craziness of the thought that with the bridegroom present, you'd be wanting to be fasting. Surely you'd be wanting to be celebrating when the bridegroom is present. Surely you'd be wanting to, 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 to let him in and, and, and to let the party begin and to, let, and to let the possibilities flow. And I think there's a new wine invited for us in here of celebration. The disciples, Jesus' disciples, they're all new believers, which is incredible as you think about it. They were just loving being with Jesus. That was reason to celebrate. And you can't help but, when you celebrate, eat and drink and, and love and enjoy and be part of this thing. One of the things about fasting in, the, in that context, and again, it's, this is not a passage against fasting. It's not that we shouldn't fast this year. Or we shouldn't fast at all. But fasting was, a, was something of an exercise in looking backwards. They would often fast in relation to some of the pain of their past. Um, they would fast with things like the destruction of the temple in 587 BC. And then they would look forward a little bit, but they would be, they would be um, thinking about the things that had happened in the past. And, 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 and yet here was the present in their midst. You know, sort of this past thing had happened, and yet here was the present sense of Jesus, who the temple represented in the Old Testament, is there in their midst, and they're locked into this thing that is, that is rooted in the past so much that they can't see the offering and the invitation that's here in the present. It's an incredible thing. And so there's this sense of this, this new wine of celebration that Jesus is encouraging. You know, when Jesus is present, we can't help but, I don't know, we can't, wasn't it great as we just sort of sang, you know, with sort of at times today, sort of our hearts lifted because the presence of Jesus is here because celebration is able to break out among us. I think in 2024, there's an invitation to a new wine of celebration. I think, too, there's, a, there's an invitation for a new wine of, of looking forward. It was, it was a time to celebrate. And part of that, you know, coming out of that whole fasting, looking back thing, Jesus was inviting us to this new wine of looking forward. Tom Wright says that, that this was a time for looking forward to the great things that God was beginning to do, not backwards at some of the things that they'd experienced back there in the past. And so Jesus moves the story on. He moves to this illustration of mending clothes. An illustration of uh, old patches and old clothes and new patches and new clothes. I guess we don't really patch our clothes much these days. We, we, uh, maybe they're better made in some ways, but we're able to buy others, which is probably a bad thing in some ways. But, but I think we can probably relate to it in a sense, you know, sort of this new patch and old patch and stuff like that. I was sort of thinking about, you know, when, you, when you've got a house and you, and you paint a room, you can't help but feel that the other rooms look a little bit tatty, you know? So I was saying, it's like the new room's great. I'm so pleased with that, but what about the other rooms? Those sorts of things go through your mind. Or if you buy, I don't know, if, if, if you buy new shoes, it makes you feel like your trousers are a, bit, are a bit dowdy. You sort of might move up your body or something like that. I need a, I need a new dress or a new, a new pair of trousers, a new shirt or something like that. Um, those sorts of things. I think the basic point that he's making is that new and old are going to, are going to clash at some level. And as we, as we have this thing about the new wine, I think, of looking forward, that's going to be important for us in 2024. You know, as we came to the end of 2023, I was, I was really staggered at the number of people who, who sort of were really struggling coming to the end of 2023. You know, kind of 2023 was a tough year, wasn't it? I mean, I think for a lot of us, it was a, it was a really tough year, 2023. Well, we're in 2024, and 2024 is a new year. Um, 
And I don't think that we can just say goodbye to 2023. You know, I don't think we can just say, you know, anything that happened or the fatigue we felt or whatever it was is gone. I think the residues of 2023 will be with us in 2022 and maybe even all our lives are with us. The summer break doesn't necessarily change anything, though it may give us some different perspectives. But if we go into 2024 with unnecessary baggage from 2023, and be it attitudes or be it experiences or whatever, things that we're holding over or things that we're not willing to let go of or whatever it might be, maybe, just maybe, we'll miss some of the new wine that God is inviting in this unique entity that is 2024. It's all we've got. You know, we've, you know 2023 either sucked or was the best year or was something in between or whatever, but it's gone. And 2025 may arrive or it may not or whatever, but 2024 is what we've got. This is what God's given us. This is what we have at the moment. And so my most quoted quote of the last couple of years, I'm not sure that I've quoted in a sermon before, is Parker Palmer's idea that each time a door closes, the rest of the world opens up. And then he says, all we need to do is stop pounding on the door that just closed, turn around and welcome the largeness of life that now lies open to our soul. And I sort of I wonder as we, as we come into 2024 in the sense of let's not look back on 2023 in that sense, you know, because it's a closed door in a way, even though we, even though we take some with it, lest we miss out on the wonder that, that is offered to us as we head into 2024, if we applied that into our year, maybe we applied it into other areas of life, that each time a door closes, that close means the rest of the world can open up to us. But just stop pounding on that door. This is an opportunity, I think, to the new wine of looking forward, the new wine of celebration, the new wine of looking forward. And then I, I've been thinking about this thing of the new wine of getting wet, which I guess is probably a little bit of a mystery. I mean, what does that mean or anything? It comes really from a C.S. Lewis quote that I was, I was reading recently, which says this, if you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to get wet, you must get into the water. If you want joy, power, peace, eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. And it's like, there is a, there is a, point at which our willingness to, I don't know, to stand, to walk forward, to come, to be, to forgive, to love, to, to say yes, you know, kind of whatever it is, at which that is going to be a, a tester of whether we're going to be able to, you know, be experiencing something of the things that God is wanting to do. And we can kind of sit on the side of that and say, you know, kind of, I just don't feel wet anymore. But at some stage, we've got to, you know, I, I don't think we're a very, you know, um, I, I don't know, I, I was going to say, I, I hope we're not a manipulative place, you know, but it's like at some stage out of our own willingness, if we want to get wet, we've got to get in the water. And I don't know what that might mean for you, but if we're going to, if we want to get warm, we've got to get near the fire. If we want to have joy, we've got to be close to the places that bring and give us joy. And so Jesus spoke, didn't he, as we've read, of putting new wine into new wineskins rather than new wine into old wineskins. And so, you know, again, the, the metaphor maybe doesn't 100% work today, but again, I'm sure that we can figure it. You know, so they had wineskins, not bottles, as we would have today. But back then, you know, so when the, the wine would go into the, into the wineskin and it needed to be able to expand as it continued to ferment and it continued to develop as wine. And if it was an old wineskin, it would be hard and it would be rigid and it wouldn't have the elasticity that was needed. And so it, would, it could explode or it could um, burst out, you know, sort of think your, your grandma's pickles in the pantry or something like that or your, um, you know, your, your making of ginger beer or something like that. You know, I think we've probably all done it at some stage. We've blown something off because we didn't have that. It's that sort of illustration that he's giving. And so if God has new wine for us this year. And surely, surely he has. I mean, do you think he has? I mean, surely, surely for this year, he's got things that he's wanting us to be and, 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 and to maybe to do or to speak to us or to help us or grow us or love us, whatever it is. How will, how will you need this year to grow and adapt 
and even change to be able to receive those things? Or is it just like, well, I am like I am in 2023, and I probably will be like I am in 2024, 25. You know, you, know, you can't change this old dog, you know? And it's like, I wonder whether that's like an old wineskin, whether you'll struggle, if that's the case, to, to be with the new wine. And I think it, it's, it's in the heart probably more than in the habit, but it is a, a, an important thing, I think, for us to think about along the way. I don't know that we have a lot of control over the wine, apart from trusting it, I do think we've got quite a lot of control over the vessel that it's poured into because the vessel that it's poured into is us. And so Wright says of this that they needed to think differently. This is the Pharisees. They needed to think bigger to get, to get new wineskins for the new wine he had to offer. And then I, I thought that I was taken with this thing. He said most people are threatened by that kind of challenge. It's like, you know, if we really thought about it, I mean, at the end of the day, um, and if I, if, if I just talk about me, at the end of the day, I'd rather just, stay where I am, thank you very much. It feels relatively comfortable, even though there might be bits that I don't like so much. But maybe, just maybe, there's an invitation to stir and to allow this old wineskin to be able to be renewed so that new wine can, uh, I don't know, can seep in or can, can have its way. This whole idea of the new, the, um, the new wine of getting wet. So new wine of celebration, you know, let's, let's be a celebratory people. New wine of looking forward, you know, it's not to deny or anything like that or, you know, kind of lock into a box and not deal with things, you know, all of that. Hopefully hear me as I'm saying, but the new wine of looking forward expectantly, and the new wine of getting wet, you know, kind of I'm going to be part of the things that God wants to do. And so I thought I'd just um, finish with, with, with a few maybe practical ideas that might be helpful over the years. So, you know, if, you, if any of these are, are helpful, take a picture of it or, you know, kind of take some notes or whatever. But I, I was just thinking this thing of, you know, kind of, I wonder what helped in 2023. I wonder what sort of, you know, kind of really nourished and, and grew your soul. Was there anything? Well, if, if that was the thing, do more of that. Keep, keep those things. Do, do more of those things. But I wonder if there are things that really didn't help in 2023 that, that you might have been doing almost out of habit or routine or something like that. This is the opportunity to ditch that, you know, sort of that, that practice or that way of doing, oh, I'm going to ditch that. And it's, and it's not to, you know, so that I, I, I don't take up anything else, but it's just to be saying sort of the things that are really bringing me closer to God, I want to do more of those things and I want to draw close. And the freedom that we have, in a sense, as we think about new wine skins, to be able to um, you know, to be able to work with some new things. And you might look at that question because it's quite a tricky question in a sense because you actually have to ask yourself, actually, was there anything that I was doing that could have helped me or was there anything I was doing that might not have helped me? And that might be a, quite a hard, you know, kind of a, an arresting sort of question, but it's a question worth asking. You know, sort of what are those things? So, so questions maybe that, that could be. Um, I, was, uh, I was listening to Pray As You Go this week uh, and they had this... Um, on this, on this very scripture, actually, which I thought was amazing. And it says, they said, the torn cloak and burst wineskin are powerful images of how new Jesus' teaching must have seemed to his first followers. And then I thought they asked this really perceptive question. What is there in his teaching that is still capable of surprising or challenging you today? And I just think, you know, for some of us, this is our, you know, um, I became a Christian at 19, so this is, my, this is my 43rd New Year sermon. You know, you've heard it before. You know, I haven't, haven't come up with anything new. It's like, man, if I'd heard that on year one, it's taken me 42 years for Vic to say this, you know, kind of my life's all changed. I don't think any of you are thinking that at this stage. You know, I don't, I don't think it about my own material, you know, sort of thing. But this sort of sense of what is there that's going to stir you to the core and go towards it, you know, and, and in it, abandon your cynicism or your, you know, it doesn't work or your pains or whatever. And it's like you're, you're going to still have those things. But what is it that's still surprising or challenging to you today? And again, you know, we're not very good at sort of, you know, and so today I want you to sign up for this and, you know, kind of you're all going to come up and I, all of that sort of thing. It's, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in your heart. What a great thing to do, which is why it's a great question to take away, because I don't think you, I'm not, I'm not going to answer it, but it'd be a great question to think about over the week. And then some other questions, 
and you know, I went back to 2023 because you do when you're sort of preaching your 40. Well, not that I preached 43, but when you're in your, you know, when you've been doing New Year sermons all the time, it's like, well, what did I say last year? I don't, I don't remember. And um, and it's like, and I looked at these questions and I gave them last year, and I thought they were really smart last year. And I looked at, read them again, and I thought they're really smart. So I'm going to do it again this year. So here are some more questions. So if you were here on whatever the date was last year, this is I said these before. So all you know, kind of full full disclosure, right? So, and I'm just kind of thinking, how can I let God in this year? You know, what are the, where is it, where's he going to find ways of pouring new wine into me? And how, how am I going to do that? I, I still love Rick Warren's, I, I still think it's the best thing that I've heard in terms of memorability and stuff like that, of diverting daily, withdrawing weekly, and abandoning annually. I, I love that as a concept. I don't know that I do it very well or whatever, but, but that's one way for me that I can let in. So, you know, diverting daily, sort of, you know, every day in the, in the shower or, you know, sort of at that traffic light or something like that, I'm going to make sure that I draw my thoughts into, you know, who and what God is, and many times, hopefully, during the day. Withdrawing weekly, you know, sort of having time where, I'm, where it was dedicated time for God. Um, and then abandoning annually, you know, having a day or having a you know retreat or whatever it might be, where I where I just go into the depth. I, I think that's a it's a great pattern for those who are into patterns and stuff to be able to. But but that that's not the answer for you, perhaps. But but where where am I going to be able? Where am I going to find to let God in this year? And then how can I respond when God appears unexpectedly? Because because here's the truth. You know, kind of we're, we're a vineyard people, we're a, we're a kingdom people, we're expecting the kingdom of God to move. And so where am I going, how am I going, when he, when he says, you know, um, phone that person or cross the room or invite that person or forgive that person or pay for that person or, um, you know, uh, I, I want you to, you know, sort of restore something. When he appears unexpectedly, how can I respond when that happens, when I know it is? You know, am I going to shut it down? Because he's going to do it. There's going to be those times. I, I always love that Matthew 16, 16, I think it is. You know, Peter, you, um, you know, Jesus says, who, are people, who do people say I am? And, oh, yeah, we say you're Elijah and, um, you know, Moses and all of this sort of thing. And he says, yeah, but who do you say I am? And Peter, he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It's like in the moment, it's like I'm responding to the opportunity that God has. I mean, what a, what a way to live. How fantastic could that be? Um, what is God inviting me to examine, you know, because I think if we do go into a relationship with God, it's not all about, man, you know, God's just going to love you and it's going to be cool and partying and stuff like that and, you know, all the wine's just going to come and all of those sorts of things. I think, you know, when we, when we have a process like this, He will take us into some deep and dark places that we all have. And He does it because He loves us and He does it because He loves us too much to leave us alone, that sort of phrase. And so how am I going to respond or what is God inviting me to examine this year? And I don't care whether you've been doing the, the journey for decades or for, you know, uh, for years or for, uh, for months. These are, these are invitations of God, and, and we should be part of those, I think. And then finally, where will I go in adversity? And the, the, this is the thing that got me thinking. It's like, man, if we had done this really well at the start of 2023, where will I go in adversity? Our experience of 2023 could have been somewhat differently if we found 2023 a really difficult year, because there's going to be adversity in 2024 too. Mark my words. Because it, it, it just is. It is life. And where are you going to go? Are you going to lose your faith at those times, or are you going to step in, are you going to find your faith in those times? You know, are you going to, are you going to go deeper with God, or are you, going to, are you going to say, you don't love me anymore? You know, and I mean, uh, that's, that's very arbitrary, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's nothing like that in terms of you know, sort of the end of spectrums or whatever. But wow, you know, where am I going to go when it gets tough? So for me, I mean, I shared this last year too. For, for me, I go to Jesus in Gethsemane. That's just my current journey. So when it's tough, I, I meet Jesus in Gethsemane. And it's like, well, you know, that's really weird because that was 2,000 years ago. But yeah, but, but that, is, that is where God has led me. And so there are, there are opportunities as we relate to him. That's not your thing. That's, that's, that's my journey. And so what an opportunity that is. 
And so I think it's an invitation, you know. I think the start of a year is a good time to be thinking. And these are the themes that I've kind of had in mind. Celebration. Let's, let's celebrate. Let's shake something loose and celebrate. Let's, let's look forward, you know, sort of anticipate the things that God's going to do. Maybe this is for us as church, and my, my message today is really aimed for us as individuals more than, you know, rah, rah, this is what we're going to do as a church. Um, and then let's find the new wine of getting wet, whatever that might mean. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity to do so. So Tom Wright says, you know, when God isn't doing new things, we should join the party, not grumble because the new wine is threatening to burst our old bottles. I just think, let's be those guys. Wouldn't that be cool as a Shaw Vineyard Church? I would love to be able to do that. So let's stand, and we're going to, uh, we're going to just um, pray and close. So what I'd love you to do is just to um, cup your hands sort of in a bowl, if you're happy to do that. So bring them together and, and, and for it to be like, a, be like a bowl and maybe look down into it. And, and I'd love you just to feel like in, this, in these hands are the, are the entirety of your 2024. You know, the experiences, the feelings, the, the ebbings and flowings, your faith, your family, your things that are important, the things that you don't know about. just to allow God to pour into that bowl. Because if he does, he's going to be with you in each and every one of those. So Lord, would you pour into not our hands, but our 2024s. And you may even almost feel it physically in a way or something. You know, you may, you may have a word that comes to mind or a sense, you know, so just be present in the moment. And if you think this is sort of weird, this is this is a new wineskin moment. So pour into our 2024, Lord, we pray. Just stay like that if you want to, but I wonder if you could form your hands into a little heart. You know, so you might be sort of with your fingers down, you'll, you'll figure it out. And now, Lord, we give you our heart. And we ask you to pour into our heart. And we bring before you whatever comes to mind when we do that. those who are here today, those who are on holiday, those who will be part of our congregation this year, but we haven't met them yet. Bless this place and the individuals who, who choose to do life and faith together. Well, we have, there are many of us, but there is one God, and we celebrate you together.